In the city of Galhara, on the opposite side of the well from Zinashari, a bunch of sorcerers prepared to do their nightly ritual of realigning the emerald crystals that lined their city's borders. These crystals acted as a sort of defence against general magic attacks. Never actually been needed, but the people still took comfort in their presence. However, on this particular occasion, the crystals looked a bit dim, with some of them darkened completely, and the sorcerers of Galhara just stood there and looked at each other. They're not drawing properly from the well. No sooner had the young spellcaster pointed out the obvious, the crystals then started to glow, renewing their normal activities. And again, sorcerers all just kind of looked at each other. Oh, I guess there's nothing to worry about. It's failed! Hakar was absolutely furious, and Xavius was also pretty displeased. They'd spent several hours trying to cut the well off, and just as the Houndmaster had stated, they had failed. What can we do? For the first time, Xavius read uncertainty in Hakar's face. Bloke looked scared. We must ask him. So, Lord Xavius stepped forward and took a knee. Is the portal strengthened? Nay, great one. The work in that regard has not progressed as we hoped. The portal flared for a moment with what almost seemed like insane fury. Must have just imagined that though, Xavius thought. You seek something. Speak. So, the Lord Councillor went ahead and explained the notion of sealing off the well's power from all but the palace. I had already considered this. The one I sent first has failed in his duty. What? Another will be sent to you. You must make certain that the portal is made ready for him. Another, my lord. I now send you one of my commanders. He will ensure that what is needed will come to pass. And that was the end of that conversation. He sends us one of his commanders. Do you know which one? I... I know which one. Well, we must make ready. He'll be coming immediately. After a few moments of the Highborn waving their arms about at the portal, a huge dark figure then stepped out of it. You have disappointed him. I have no excuse, Manoroth. No, you do not. There will be no more failures. The huge behemoth then turned his gaze towards Xavius. The Great One approves of your efforts, Lord Night Elf. Oh my god, Xavius thought. I've been blessed. The plan will be followed. We'll cut off the place of power from the rest of this realm. Then the arrival of the host can begin in earnest. Sargeras himself will want to be here when the world is cleansed. Very, very much. Meanwhile, Ronin woke up with a bunch of grass and mud in his mouth. At least he hoped it was mud. He pushed himself up, which took quite a bit of effort, to realise that he was now in some random wood. Not the Forest Lord's special realm anymore. Just a wood. The sudden fear that he'd been thrust into yet another realm crossed his mind before he started to recall what had actually happened. Although he'd passed out whilst being dragged off by the sneaky fell beast, he'd apparently regained consciousness at some point long enough to cast a spell. A spell to escape, said sneaky fell beast. Great. So he could be literally anywhere. A few miles away, or on the complete other side of the world. However, a rustling bush noise sounded nearby. And then Brox appeared. No quarrel, human. It's just me. Are you alone? Was, until I saw you. You make a lot of noise, human. You move like a drunken infant. I meant Malfurion. He was also nearby when I cast the spell. If you were drawn into it, he might have been. Fair enough. Didn't see him. Saw no fell beast either. Well, that was good news, Ronin thought. Any idea where we might be? Woods. <sighs> Thanks. Well, I was planning on going this way. You have any better ideas? Should wait till sunrise. Better to see than the night elves. They don't like the sun. Ronin didn't particularly feel comfortable waiting for daylight, and Rox obviously picked up on that. Your direction's as good as any. So, off they buggered in that direction. Rox, how did you get here? Not this exact location. I know that, obviously. But how did you come to this realm? Rox then went ahead and regaled the events of whichever chapter it was, with the wobbly distortion and his young companion getting exploded. Do you understand what swallowed us? Wizard spell. Bad one. Sent us far from home. Farther than you might know. Ronin decided that Brox had a right to the truth, regardless of what Krasis might think. 
So he informed the Orc of the fact that they were 10,000 years in the past and stuff. And to his surprise, Brox accepted it quite readily. Can we return, human? I don't know. You saw. Demons are here. The Legion is here. This is the first time they tried to invade our world. Most beyond Dalaran don't know that history anymore. We'll fight them. No, we can't. We might change history by interfering. <laughs> you already fought. That simple statement shut Ronin up. He had indeed already fought, and was now back to questioning whether that had been the right choice or not. The two then moved on in silence, with Ronin battling inner demons whilst Brox kept a wary eye out for real ones. However, as they moved through the forest, the foliage above grew thicker and thicker, blocking out the moonlight and making it very difficult to keep going, until eventually they had no choice but to turn back. But as they turned around, the way they'd just come from was now completely blocked by dodgy looking trees. We came from through there. I know we did. Agreed. Brox then raised his new axe, and we go back that way too. The orc then went to take a swing, only for huge branch-like hands to suddenly seize the weapon, and as Ronin watched his new orc companion disappear up into the sky, something struck him on the back of the head. However, instead of striking harsh ground, he hit something soft. A body. Ugh. You. It's mine, you bastard. Malfurion sat up immediately, scanning the trees above. Brox, do not fight them. They mean you no harm. They're trying to take my axe. Just do as I say. They are protectors. Ugh. Bollocks. After a few minutes of everything and everyone calming down. Thank you, brothers of the forest. I know you watched over me until my friends could find me. They mean no harm. They just did not understand. The leaves of the surrounding trees rustled slightly. We'll trouble you no longer. More rustling for a moment, with Brox's axe now landing with a thud from the branches above. And Brox went ahead and grabbed it, before calmly nodding his gratitude to a bunch of trees. You can speak with trees. To a point, and ask them where we are. I already have. Not at all that far from where we were, but far enough. Actually, we're both fortunate and unfortunate. How so? We're only a short distance from my home. Both the Night Elf and Brox didn't seem overjoyed by that revelation. What? That's good news, isn't it? I was captured close to here, wizard. Fine. I'll take it from here, then. I'll know what to expect. You will be sensed immediately by the Moon Guard. They have the skill to usurp your spells. In fact, they may have already sensed the first one. Well, what do you suggest, then? As we're near my home, we should make use of it. There are others who could be of assistance to us. My brother. And Tyrande. The shaman. Cool. Your twin, though. What? Ronin was still worried about Krasis, but with no notion of how to find his former mentor, the Night Elf's plan made the most sense. So, with Malfurion in the lead, the trio head off. A demigod. Scenarius. Did he teach you how to talk to trees? Yes, he is my teacher. I seem to be the first to truly understand his ways. Even my brother prefers the powers of the well to the ways of the forest. The sheer mention of the well caused Ronin to feel ever so slightly excited. The well of eternity. The fabled fount of power. Was that why his own magics were amplified, he thought? We're not far. Only a few more minutes and... However, before Malfurion could finish that sentence... The trio suddenly found themselves absolutely surrounded. An excellent piece of work, lad. Tis the beastman we sought, and no doubt the one who aided in his escape. A mumbly grumbly voice from behind the commander spoke up, but too low for Ronin to make out. However, the person with that voice then stepped forward, and Ronin's eyes widened. His garments were different, and his hair, but other than that he had exactly the same face as Malfurion. 